how to write an engineering resume. So you want to start applying to internships or jobs? Let me show you everything I know on writing resumes. Before I begin, I would like to mention that I was part of a program to help me write effective resumes. I've attended several resume workshops and I've attended many job fairs where my resume has been critiqued by professionals. Over the years, I've collected very valuable information on writing effective resumes and today I want to share with you everything I know to help you land an internship or a job. My techniques have proven to be effective in job fairs, so it will be geared towards job fairs, but it can also be used as a general resume. As an engineer, it's very important to have experience prior to graduating because that will be your biggest asset when it comes to looking for a job. As I mentioned in my other video, how to get an internship, companies will typically be looking for candidates that can jump on board as fast as possible. They basically don't want to spend too much time training you because you can be making them money instead. Keep that in mind when writing your resume. As we will see in a few minutes, you can use this idea to write specific things in your resume that become attractive to recruiters. This video will be a little different from the others, as I will just get into it and write a complete resume from scratch for you. As I am writing, I will tell you why I think certain details are important, but they are not necessary. There is no specific way to do it. I am not claiming that this is the best way to do it, but from experience, it has worked great for me. And I just want to share what has helped me. You can use this as a template or use it as a reference to help you out on your engineering career. Good luck. Let's begin. So the first thing we want to do is set up a page. Yes, just one page. One of the most important things that you have to keep in mind is that recruiters don't want to see several pages as a resume. No matter who you are, you should be able to fit all your skills and experience in one page. No excuses. At the top of your resume and center should be your name in a larger font than the rest of your resume. By making your name larger than the rest of your resume, you are creating an immediate focus on your name which can help the recruiter connect a name with a face if you are in a job fair. If you are applying online, it increases the chance of the recruiter to read your name, which can be to your advantage depending on the recruiter. Who knows, maybe they want to add more female engineers to the team? Right below, you should indicate US citizen if you are in the US. The reason this is important is because a lot of companies require a citizenship for clearance. So if you include your status, you will be saving the company the trouble of having to contact you to ask. Some companies would also like to see if you need sponsorship later on. So having it can help. The next step is to write your address, phone number, and email address. This is important because some companies will prefer to hire someone local over someone across the country. However, the reverse is also true. Some companies want diversity. So regardless, just put it on there. The phone number and email address are pretty self-explanatory and serve as your contact information. We continue with objective. My biggest tip here is that you should invest the time to make this unique to every position that you are aiming for. This should vary depending on the job title and the company. Let's say you're applying to Grape Tech for an intern position. The objectives should say something like, seeking product design engineer in intern position at Grape Tech. This is of course after you have researched all the available positions for the company. If you don't care and you just want an internship to start your career, then just make sure you mention the company name and the objective. This is especially important if you're going to a job fair and there are several companies. You should change the objective to match every individual company and the position to give you the upper hand from all the other people who wrote a general objective. The next section should be your education. If you have no experience, the name of the school and your GPA are very important because certain schools have certain projects with specific companies. So those companies will want to hire a student that has already worked on a company project. As I mentioned earlier, companies want you to start contributing as fast as possible. So if you know the work, you will have a higher chance to get that internship. Sometimes the name of the school can also help you out, especially if you have no prior experience. Recruiters tend to be more attracted to resumes with well-known and well-ranked schools. However, if you are not going to a well-ranked or well-known school, don't worry, you can always overshadow the school name with the rest of your resume. You should include the name of the school, the name of your degree, your emphasis, if you have one. For example, if you're focusing on communications, then you should write it. Your graduation date and your GPA if it's over 3.0. If it's not, just exclude it. GPA is important because a lot of companies have a GPA cutoff. 
if you don't have the 3.0 or 3.2 or whatever the cutoff is, you should exclude it and impress them with the rest of your resume to increase the chance that they overlook the GPA requirement. I know several of my peers managed to score internships without the minimum GPA requirement, simply because they had worked on several projects. The order of the next sections will be determined by the position and company that you are applying or speaking to. I will do my best to try to explain what I mean, but the next three sections should be your school projects, your work experience, and your classes. So what do I mean by determined by the position and company? Well, let's use an example. Let's say that you're applying for a software related position. You are currently working on software for a robot. You are taking a software engineering class where you are designing an app and you are working at your local convenience store. In this scenario, the last part should definitely be your experience, unless you create a software that revolutionizes the store. So the first section in this scenario should be either your robot or your class. Typically projects are more attractive to recruiters, so the robot project should be first, followed by the class where you mentioned the app, and finally the convenience store. Of course, if you currently have an internship position as a software engineer and want to apply for a software engineering position, then the internship position should be your first section. Let's continue under the assumption that your order will be projects, classes, and your work experience. So let's begin. Projects. This section is probably the most important as it will serve to tell the recruiter what you have done as well as show the engineers that will hire you what tools and skills you have learned, used, and acquired. This section is probably the most important as it will serve to tell the recruiter what you have done as well as show the engineers that will hire you what tools and skills you have learned, used, and acquired. This is especially important if you are looking for that first internship. For example, a lot of schools have a CubeSat satellite project linked with a specific company, so we'll use that as an example. You first name the project and date the start and end date. If it's current, then you just write present. Now what you have to do is list the things that you have done as part of the project and the tools that you have used. Try to list three tasks that you have completed or are currently working on. If you program using C++, then you should list what you programmed and the IDE you used. Also try to format your sentences to show your skills and not just list them. Too many times though I see students list a skill section, but to a recruiter it's just something that you copied and pasted from a sample resume. Try to be unique and try to show how much you actually know. So let's write it. 1. Program satellite processor using C and sample IDE to retrieve, store, and transmit sensor readings to the ground station. 2. Created BVA script on Excel to control an antenna, receive, decode, and graph information received by the ground station. 3. Design anomalies simulation of satellite antenna deployment using a microcontroller and ARM assembly. As you can see, by doing this, you are showing recruiters the programs that you have used, programming languages that you know, and protocols that you have learned and implemented. At the same time, you are keeping things general so that the recruiter is tempted to interview you to ask you further. Another plus is that these protocols and programming languages are actually used by companies, so mentioning them in this way can really help your chances. Something to note is that projects that you do on your own are just as important as school projects, and you can list them in the same way. They should follow the same structure and format, and in my opinion, individual projects are actually more important because they show that the student took initiative to learn new skills on their own and were not forced by the engineering department. The only reason I will say the school projects are considered more important by recruiters is because they typically are led by a faculty or some are led by the company. So continue by listing all the projects that you have worked on related to your field in the same format. If you are in a club that makes robots for competitions, this will qualify as a project. Next, I'm going to show you how to list classes and make them look appealing to the recruiter. What you have to do here is first name the section, emphasis coursework. In this section, you will pick classes and labs that will directly help you for the specific job or company that you are applying to. As an example, let's say you are applying to a communications position. In this section, you will list all the classes related to communications that you took and projects or labs that you have worked on for that class. Again, you will word what you have learned, used, built in a way to show the recruiters your skills. So let's see an example. 1. Analog Digital Communication Systems Worked on several transceiver projects using ORCAT for schematics, MALA for simulations, and several bench equipment for testing such as oscilloscope, 
power meter, power source, signal generator, and signal spectrum analyzer. This shows a recruiter the purpose the instrument served as opposed to just a list. Continue by listing classes in a similar manner. Finally, you should list any work experience that you have to show interpersonal skills or technical skills. The procedure should be similar to the projects. You begin by creating a section called work experience or relevant experience. Name the company, your position, and the time period. I will go under the assumption that you have no prior technical experience. So now you might be thinking, as a cashier, what could you possibly list to make it appealing to the technical recruiter? We'll focus on interpersonal skills, languages, and awards. Let's do an example. You can put something like, specialized in customer service, assisting over 100 customers on a daily basis in Mandarin, Spanish, and English. This shows that you can speak more than one language as well as dealing with people. So get creative in what you list. You never know what skills companies are looking for. Maybe the job has an office in China or Latin America, and this is where those skills come in. Or maybe the job deals with customers, so the people skills come in. As I mentioned, don't just list skills. Show the recruiter what you do to use those skills. If you are applying for a job and have already had an internship, then follow the format of the projects. The only difference is that you include the position. Okay, so this should be the skeleton for your resume, and once you have more experience, you can start eliminating the less relevant experience or the coursework section. Play with the fonts and spacing to make your resume unique and one page long. Just don't make the font too small or too dense. Just get to the point as I mentioned earlier and wait for the interview to be specific about things. In this video, I didn't want to focus on font sizes or infograms. Typically, recruiters don't care and would rather see how much you know. So all the aesthetics will be up to you. I try to make the focus of this video on the content rather than its looks. Anyway, I really hope this video can help some of you engineering students. I remember being in your shoes once and if someone had created this video for me, it would have helped me out a lot. As always, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below and subscribe for more videos. Also, if you know any tips that can help our engineering students out, please leave a comment as you never know who you could be helping.